Hey guys, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. We're going to pick up where we left off with our soft drain book. Uh, the new chapter is called Rattlesnake Springs. So ooh, I don't want to see any rattlesnakes. The day stayed warm. The steep road seemed never ending. Tramping up a mountain and down to the next valley, wading across a stream, trudging up again. Soft Rain's feet grew sore from stepping on stones she couldn't avoid. Aunt Key's toes soon showed through the holes in her moccasins. Even the, each evening they gathered wood and made a blazing campfire for the nights grew cool. On the third day, Mother was allowed to ride in a wagon while Aunt Key and Soft Rain walked alongside it. She's getting very weak. I can tell the mom is really getting weak. The next day, Mother refused to ride. I want to stay with my family, she said. Soft Rain could tell the ride had been good for her because her step was brisker and she looked stronger. Brisker means a little bit more fast paced. Late that day, they heard a murmur coming from the Saligi ahead of them. As it grew louder, Soft Rain asked, what is happening? But everyone was too excited to answer. Aunt Key saw the wide valley first. The Hawassi River, she said, and Rattlesnake Springs alive with Saliki. Soft rain drew a deep breath when she viewed the valley below. There were stockades, but they seemed to be empty. Smoke from hundreds of campfires rose to the sky, and thousands of real people with their animals milled around the fires from so far away. Everything looked small and orderly, but as they approached, soft rain held tightly to Mother and Aunt Key. The crowd of people, animals and wagons, was overwhelming. They walked about arm in arm, looking for a familiar face, but no one greeted them or even looked their way. Around some fires, old ones sat quietly with heads bowed. Many Saligi men walked or rode quickly past them. Then the young chief they knew saw them and stopped. Make camp here, he said, pointing to a fire no one was tending. Where are the men going, Soft Rain asked. Hush, Soft Rain, you ask too many questions, Mother cautioned. It's all right, how else will she know? Soon everyone will be told. A final council is meeting to decide on laws for a new home, he explained. We have divided into groups. Saligi men and chiefs such as myself have already been appointed as officers to conduct everyone safely. In a few days, the first group will start westward. We will all leave soon. Could my father be one of the men at the council meeting? Soft Rain asked. I want to go look for him. The chief shook his head. It's too crowded. What is your name, child? While I'm there, I will look for your father. I am Soft Rain. I'll remember, the chief said before he rode away. The air grew thick with the smoke from many fires. Soft rain welcomed the warmth of their own, and she ate the cornbread and meat portion she was given, though her mouth watered for fresh fruit and vegetables. Despite the summer drought, wouldn't father have had a good crop? He always did. Without thinking, she walked slowly in the direction the chief had gone. Keep our fire, fire in sight or you may get lost, Mother called to her. When Soft Rain returned to the fire, she knelt and smoothed the earth with her hand. Picking up a twig, she began writing words the white man's way in the dirt. What does it mean, Soft Rain? A familiar voice asked. Her new friend, the young chief, stood watching over her shoulder. Father? Grandmother, hawk boy, green fern, she said, pointing to each name as she read it. So she's writing the names of those that she loves in the dirt. She stretched to look behind the chief. Did you find my father at the meeting? He shook his head. I'm sorry. I asked many men if they had a daughter named Soft Rain. No one did. Soft Rain's heart skipped a beat, but you didn't ask everyone. There wasn't time. If your father is here, he will find you. He will know that you were looking for him. Many families are looking for a missing loved one. Soft Rain stared at the names she had written and drew a circle around fathers. How will he find us? She wondered. Soft Rain asked the chief to find to share food. Mother offered the chief a small loaf of warm bread. 
Breaking off a piece, he said, thank you, but I can't stay. There will be another council meeting before we sleep this night. Soft Grain quickly looked up into his eyes. Before she asked her question, he answered it. Yes, I shall keep asking about your father. He swallowed the bread, mounted his horse, and was gone. He's being very nice. I, I like this guy, this chief. Soft Rain did not see the chief for days. He is busy helping people get ready to start west, Mother said. Then it happened. Early one morning, they were awakened by noise and confusion of people and snorting animals. Riders on horseback and wagons filled with little children. Mothers about to give birth. And old people who could never walk the great distance. Behind them were the walkers, too many to count. After the last person disappeared from sight, an eerie stillness, that means kind of weird and creepy, fell over the camp until in a few days another group left. Soft rain watched the leaves turn yellow. They reminded her that the time was near for the new moon festival. If we were still home, she thought, our salu would be picked and stored for winter, and Green Fern and I would be dancing. Soft rain's eyes filled with tears. She and her cousin would never dance together again. There would be no festival at Rattlesnake Springs. Oh, still so sad. I'm, I'm waiting for the, the happy moment in this book. Uh, I am glad that they have a nice chief man helping and he's getting to go and ask if he about her father and hopefully they will find her father. And I don't know, do you think he's still alive? I'm still wondering myself. And I'm glad her mother's getting better. So there are some positives in this story. But I am curious uh, about what will happen next. And it seems like she's trying to stay in pretty good spirits. It would be hard, though. Bye, guys. I'll see you next time.